Hey guys, and welcome back to Agrarian Skies. And would you look at this, all these items building up. Starting to overflow my barrels, like, why do I have <laughs> over 4,000 carrots? I'm not doing anything with carrots. I should probably stop farming the carrots. Um, well, I started farming uh, rubber roots because I should have probably been doing that earlier. But yeah, we got to figure out something to do with all these excess items. And, well... Maybe not the easiest, but one solution to it is just to stuff them all into deep storage units and not really have to worry about it. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to start to replace a lot of these barrels um, that are starting to overflow on me, just with deep storage units so I don't have to worry about shutting down excess production. And yeah, but unfortunately if we look at the recipe for the deep storage units, where are they? Deep storage units. I basically need a tesseract, which means I'm going to need a lot of resident ender. Mm-hmm. So I got to find a, a good way to make a lot of ender pearls. There are possibilities. I can do it through fish breeding, but that's probably going to be kind of slow. So I don't really know if that's the way I want to do it. Ooh, that's a cool fish. So, for the moment being, let's uh, let's get started on an auto spawner. And just spawn in a bunch of endermen, grind them up for their pearls, and put those pearls to good use. Now, one issue of that is I'm not really producing a lot of mob essence. As you can see, this is only 4,200 4, millibuckets, which is just four buckets. Oh, actually, that's like a cryophane. <laughs> Uh, mob essence I have a little more of, but only 62 buckets, which really isn't a whole lot if I want to continuously spawn mobs. So that means I gotta get a grinder going and a little better of a mob farm. So let's do that. So I've already, already produced a grinder. So we can go set this up nice and quick. And I'm gonna be setting up for now kind of a vanilla style mob farm. Because um, I'm not really at the stage where I can get some curse surf. That would require either getting a division sigil from a peck or getting one from killing a wither. And I really don't want to kill a wither right now. Uh, not to mention I don't have any wither skulls, so I, well, I'd have to just automate that production. So yeah, let's get started on this uh, vanilla style mob farm. And I'm going to set up a very simple one. Just using conveyor belts and a grinder, and a big dark room made of cobblestone. Um, I'm not going to make it all fancy and kind of special looking like I do with a lot of my other buildings, because while it's going to be dark inside, we're not really ever going to see this building. So it's going to be kind of a behind the scenes thing. Okay, but we need to make conveyor belts. Okay, we'll encode that. And eh, we'll make probably Oh, I don't know, maybe like a full stack of them. I already have 14, okay, but I need more. And let's see how auto crafting is going. Cool, and it's just making the bars it needs to do the thing. So let's set up the grinder room. Yeah, I get under here, and I'm just gonna get this going real quick, just in this Big empty space here. Actually, you know what? I can probably leave those torches for the moment being. Okay, and builders want again to do this quickly. All right, so how big is this area I have available here? So this is, what is our coordinate? Okay, so we are at 1480. And if I run across, now I am at 1499 so it's 19 oh okay yeah 1499 so 19 divided by half oh no wait no no it's 1500 okay so that's 20 and then that divided by half is about 10 so if I go to the midpoint here this should be about the midpoint of the grinding room and well it's not going to be perfectly centered I guess. 
I thought everything was odd numbers. Okay, let's just call this the center, and we'll just go with that. <laughs> okay. Um, and the crying pit doesn't actually have to be super deep. Um, so I don't need to make a big drop for mobs. I just need to get them in a little square where the grinder can get to them. So let's just uh, run forward a bit. This is far enough, I guess. And we'll just pop the grinder down here. Okay. And the grinder itself will take care of a 5x5 five five area. Anyways, it takes care of a 5x5 five five area. So, yeah, we'll just make a 5x5 five five square. One, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And I'm going to make it one more deep just so the mobs can't hop out and I have some place to put conduits. And huh, like so. All right. Now the next stage is just to be going to be to expand this platform out in all directions from here. Um, so I'll have a surface for mobs to spawn on, and I shall uh, take care of this last little bit off camera, as well as connecting to my grinder some power, as well as uh, an output for a uh, mob essence. And items, and once I'm done that, I'll uh, yeah, I'll be right back, guys. So I thought I'd take a second and show how I'm connecting the cables and doing all the automation because I get a lot of questions about these things, and I don't want to skip over anything. So I've connected a redstone energy conduit, though any kind of thermal expansion energy conduit will work. Uh, even leadstone will be fine, and an ME covered cable over to the grinder. Um, Redstone Connery bring power. And over here I have a basic import bus to take items out of here. And then on the bottom I have a fluid import bus to extract mob essence when it comes out. Okay. And now like I said, I will be back in a moment once I have the spawning platform all placed. Okay dudes, the platform is done. So this room, oh I missed one block. Oh, uh, I missed just one block. Okay, there we go. So, this room is where the mobs are going to spawn. Yep, and I have made it, uh, well, it's going to be three high. It's four high now, but this is going to be uh, all ceiling up in here. Okay, and the last thing left to do is to put down the conveyor belts. They'll push the mobs into this area. And I will be doing this just like so. You just want to make sure we go in the right direction. And what will happen is mobs can't spawn in the conveyor belts, but they can spawn in these areas here. And eventually they'll spawn and they'll just wander onto the conveyor belt and be pushed in. Um, it's not the fastest systems. There are definitely ways to accelerate this greatly. Um, but the one benefit about this way um, is it captures Endermen. Because the best way to accelerate this would be to put dispensers here, water buckets, to push out water to push the mobs into here every few seconds. And that's an extremely fast way to do a dispenser. However, if that water hits an enderman, the enderman will teleport away and I'll lose them. So I'm not going to do it quite that way. I'm just going to go with this method. And this is the method I usually like to use. And it, it works pretty well. Like we're going to get a lot of mob essence from this. But eventually, I will replace this cobblestone with cursed earth, and mobs will be spawning like crazy in here. Like you wouldn't even believe how insane they'll be spawning in here once I do that. Okay, but one more addition I can do. So I was lucky enough to get this liquid slime bucket from Quest, and this is an optional item. It's not from a goodie bag, and if you get this, you should definitely go for this because this item put it down and makes this slime water, and this water spawns slimes, blue slimes, uh, randomly. And from those blue slimes, you get blue slime balls, which work in most recipes that green slime balls work in. So you don't actually have to worry about finding some other way to automate slime balls. Um, it doesn't produce a ton of slimes, but it produces a lot more than I'm going to need. You know what, I might put in a 
couple more conveyor belts maybe. Ooh, like so. And then, so one, two. There we go. Just so I can get the mobs that are there. Obviously, I can't put those conveyor belts under the water, uh, but this will this will be fine for these areas, just to speed things up a little bit. Um, so I'm not too dependent on the mobs and wandering in the right direction. Okay. Four. And the last conveyor belt. Sweet. And yeah, it is ready for action. Oh, wow. That, uh, huh. Perfect amount of conveyor belts. That rarely, oh, I'm missing one. Not perfect amount of conveyor belts at all. Okay. Well, let's go grab some blocks to cover up the top, as well as one more conveyor belt. Not that it would really make a big difference to how it functions, but hey, we might as well make it all symmetrical. Good thing is the conveyor belts are easy to make. Well, if you have an ME system, they are. Okay, and we'll just do the top and quartz all, all fancy, like just because I have so much quartz and I need something to do with it. <laughs> I really like quartz as a building material. I wonder if uh, there's some way to stain it. Like I made this black quartz and actually I wasn't too happy with the color of it. It's not a it's not the greatest shade of black. It's kind of this weird bluish purple. I, I don't even know how to describe that color. It's just it's not the best. All right, last piece. Don't see any mobs spawning yet, but once it gets all dark in here, oh, mob essence should start a flowing. Maybe we'll just cover up, uh, like not the whole thing, but just partially, so we can kind of peek inside and see what's going on. Um, yeah, and I'll be right back once I have this covered. All right, guys, as you can see, we got a lot of mobs in there. And hopefully they're getting grinded up and dying. I don't know. It's a little hard to tell at the moment. <laughs> uh, are they dying? Oh, boy. Well, creeper's exploding. <laughs> I don't know if they're dying, though. That's a little, a little confusing. Maybe I should uh, check up the setup. Okay, guys, I'm back. And I figured out the problem. All the mobs are dead now. Um, basically, the grinder has to output into a chest. It can't output directly into an ME system. And you know what? I knew this. <laughs> I've dealt with this issue before. I just forget. These things are complicated. And sometimes you just, you know, forget about this stuff. Oh, I want that XP. All right. So I'm going to seal this up. And now to work on the spawner portion of the system. All right, guys. I've set up a spawner. But... Before I'm going to get that going, i got to catch something to spawn in it. And I'm going to go for Endermen and Blazes. Because there are two mobs that will not just spawn randomly. I uh, my mob uh, spawner. Well, not my mob spawner, my mob farm, I should say. So we're going to need a few things. We're going to need reusable safari nets. Okay, come on, NEI. What up? There it goes. Okay, so we're going to need a launcher. And we'll take, why doesn't it want, me, want to make me a launcher? Am I missing, oh, I'm missing the rub, the sheets. Don't have the sheets. Okay. Well then, let's make the sheets. You know, I'm just going to tell it to make 66. There we go. Oh boy, okay. And a few safari nets. Now we have a, Decent supply of ender pearls. Getting these isn't too difficult. Okay, so we'll just go like this. And time to catch us some mobs. So the way you get these mobs is you got to make uh, these things called dolls. And you make an angry doll for blazes and a creepy doll for endermen. Now, what you want to do with the dolls is you'll put the creepy doll in a barrel of witch water and an angry doll in a barrel of lava. I had witch water in that barrel. Huh. I guess it disappears over time or something. 
That's okay. I have plenty more witch water I can just grab quickly. Um, and when you put it in, the mobs spawn close by, and then you can try to catch them. Okay, we'll just turn one of these off. And then when the witch water gets made, we can just grab it quickly. Meantime, I'll show you how to make the dolls. It's, whoops, it's pretty simple. You can just look it up at any eye. First thing is the precious doll, which is porcelain and diamonds or an emerald. And then you turn that precious doll into the creepy dolls or the angry dolls. The angry dolls require glowstone and a few basic things aren't too hard to get. However, the creepy dolls require ink sacks, which are a little trickier to get in this mod pack. As you can see, you can get them for bees, or you can get them from fish products. Okay, there we go. We got our witch water back. I'm not sure why it disappeared. Uh, you can see the tree farm. I don't have sand going into it, but that's okay. That tree farm's not really doing anything for us at the moment. All right. Let's hope this works. Um, I'm just going to wait till night. Because I think this Enderman might teleport away if I look at him during the day. So I'll see you guys back here at night in a second. Alright guys, the sun is set. It's time to catch some mobs. So put the witch water in the barrel and the creepy doll. And we got to be ready and catch any enderman that comes quickly. Okay. You can see something's happening. Oh, okay, enderman. And damn it. Okay, got him. My uh, launcher wasn't working. I think I had it in the wrong mode. <laughs> uh, how do you change the mode? Okay, capture mode. It was in, it starts in release. Well, if that was close. He actually almost killed us. Okay. Next to blaze. Launcher. Change to capture mode. So this has a ch chance of explosion actually when you do it. So we got to be careful. You just got to be patient. Oh. Nice. Okay, success. Let's head over to the spawner and put them in and give it a test. And I've set up a pretty cool spawner setup, I think, that I think you guys will really like it. It's on top of my nuclear reactor. <laughs> so we'll hop up here. You can see there's redstone complicated cabling. Check this out. Oh, yeah. This little part here is a door. And I've automated it so when I flip this lever, the door goes down. Um, and it's working by drawbridges. So I have some advanced drawbridges here. Both regular drawbridges would work just fine. It's just I got the advanced ones in a, from a quest in a loot bag. And I have the disguise as blocks of quartz. You can see, you can see it now. And in inventory I put edged glass. And I, I made a gold edge glass so you can actually see the difference when it's against the sink. There it goes. And I'm just sending the signal just by kind of vanilla redstone methods. So it goes down on just regular steps on blocks. And then underground. And it goes along here and it hits a torch that's underneath the middle drawbridge. Um, and you see usually this torch is on. And what that does is it extends the drawbridge. However, if you supply a redstone signal to the block under a torch, it turns the torch off. And when a torch turns off, the drawbridge goes back down. Okay. So yeah, that's how I have that set up. And then bottle spawner is set up pretty basically. I have energy going to one side and mob essence coming out of my ME system to the other side. And then the grinder is set up identically to the grinder setup that I have for my uh, mob farm. Cool. So that's how I have it going. Might be wondering what this thing does. And this lever 
removes that redstone block from the top and bottom of the spawner. Um, so if that block is on, it shouldn't be able to spawn mobs. So let's test that out by putting uh, one of these safari nets in and running back. Okay, as you can see, nothing's happening, and that's because a redstone signal turns off the spawner. Now, if I flip this, we should get mobs starting to spawn in here. I'll just give it a, give it a second. There we go. We got Enderman spawning, and the grinder should start taking care of them. Oh, there they go. Sweet. Our Ender Pearl machine is working very well. And everything's going straight into the enemy system. This guy's not dying because he's actually outside of the range of a spawner. Spawner has a 5x5 five five range and this inside area is 6x6. Six six. So if they walk just on the edge here, they won't hit the spawner, but they'll really only be in that area just for a second. Okay. So let's take a look and see why this stopped working. Because you'd expect they'd be spawning still. So put the block down just to make sure we don't get any surprises. Okay, so what's going on? There's no power. Interesting. Hmm. Why is there no power? I must have just broken the cable underground and forgot to repair it. <laughs> let's take a look. Oh yeah, I uh, accidentally disconnected the cable. Cool, but yeah, I'll just reconnect that off camera. Uh, well, off camera I should say before the next episode and get this thing up and running again. But yeah, we have our mob farm. Um, I'm not going to test the blazes out in here because the grinder will only grind the one horizontal plane in front of it. So to get the blazes working in here, I'm actually going to have to put a whole row of grinders going up to the ceiling like that to really catch them all. Um, I And I will take care of that um, some other time, or maybe I'll build a separate spawner just for blazes. I don't know. I have to decide about that. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope I'll, you know, see you next video.